everyone, welcome to the Desert Castle part of the Chameleon Twist speedrunning tutorial series. Desert Castle is another level that's only done in the all levels category, and it should be noted that this level is less optimized than the any percent specific levels. Let's get into it. Desert Castle is probably my favorite level in the entire game. It is another level kind of like the introduction section of Jungle Land in that it is an open level rather than a room-based level. Also, this level has global cycles just like Kids Land, if you've watched the Kids Land video already. But if you haven't, global cycles mean that there are moving platforms in the level that operate on a timer based on the, the time in-game. You see why there's 34 seconds elapsed? So the platforms are going to be moved to where they are 34 seconds in, regardless of when you get to them. We'll get to what the good cycles are there on the parts that we are actually on them, and I'll use some pre-recorded footage like I did for Kids Land. But for the beginning sections and every section that doesn't involve a moving platform, I'll just be going through it like I have been. So these spikes here are the first obstacle of the level, and you can actually use your tongue to stop them so you don't have to deal with them. And even more than that, you can pole vault out of the way and dodge them, but to go fastest here, you can actually waste a little bit of time and then jump through it without taking damage. It's also possible to run straight at these spikes as soon as the level starts and jump on the fifth beat of the music. Now I'm not talented musically, so I just kind of do it by feel, but Kefka discovered that the fifth beat of the music is what you can jump on to get through every time. And then again on the eighth beat to jump again to make it past them when they're coming back through here. That'll look something like this. For the next part, you kind of want to line up with the edge of this, grab this pole, and spin over. That'll allow you to reach this platform. If you're not far enough, you'll just fall down here and do a neutral vault now. But that's the fast way to get through there. Running along, this is some very generic platforming. There's a pole over here you can grab, but you can also just make the jump over. And as we're trying to make global cycles, you probably want to do the jump because it's fastest. And the first global cycle is really the most important one, and it's not very far into the level. And there's some leeway, so if you make a mistake, it's not too terrible. This is again, you can jump across instead of using the pole. If you fall, you can still pole vault up. And then pole vault up this wall. You want to make sure you like jump over these, because if you just fall, you'll hit the birds, and that'll lose you some time. Climb up the steps, and then here we'll actually implement another slope boost like we did at the beginning of Jungle Land, where you're going to fall down this slope and jump at the end of it, and you'll continue that speed of falling and get a much larger momentum boost forward. And now that you're down here, you kind of want to line up to about right here. Well, you want to be behind that and run up to that point and do a pole vault up, and you'll clip through the bottom of that spike and damage boost up to this. Alternatively, you can use your tongue to knock out those spikes. But as it stands, this is quite a bit slower than doing the slope boost and doing a pole vault up to here. And that leads us up to the first global cycle. Alright, so when you're coming up here to make this cycle, the platform will kind of be on its way back, and you can make it all the way up to about here. You'll be able to jump to it. It's going to stop in front of this arrow shooter, so you probably want to stick your tongue out and be there to grab an arrow and then this arrow shooter might get you so I usually spit it at that when it's going to shoot and that'll get you to the next section. One other thing I want to mention is if you miss this cycle with this platform and you fall you can actually do a little backup strat by pole vaulting into it and that makes the cycle much easier to hit if you're missing it. It's still pretty risky because if you're not directly underneath the platform You'll kind of get thrown out like that. So 
you really want to make the cycle, and especially if you have the platform too far along to be made again, then you'll be behind a cycle, but it's still something that you can do to try to speed it up a little bit if you've missed it. So once you get across, even though you can technically make this bridge cycle uh, on the fastest cycle, you don't necessarily want to take this bridge because it's not the fastest way across here. Now you might be asking, how else would you get across this massive gap? Well the answer my friends is to run on this wall. There's actually just a slight jut out of the wall that you can totally just walk on. Uh, it's very hard to see and as you might not be able to tell, it slopes up here to a point where you can't walk on it. So you have to jump up here and then this is probably the easiest point to see it where it kind of doesn't line up correctly. There's actually a hole right here so you make sure you jump across to this section and then once you get over here you'll make it to this. So once you get through that, this platform is going to be on its way backwards as you approach it. Jump on it and then jump over to here on this wall. And you can jump up this. You can't really walk up it because it's finicky and also it slows you down. And that'll get you up to this platform. If you didn't make the global cycle where the platform's here to jump up to this, you can wait for it. Or if you've fallen off or you didn't make the global cycle, you can come down here and grab onto this pole uh, by doing a tongue vault up to it. And that'll let you through. And then there's a couple different things you can do. So the easy way is to board this platform, ride it up, take it over to here, wait a little while, board this platform. You might want to zoom the camera out so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, grab onto this pole as you're falling so the platform doesn't bump into you and knock you off of it. And then you've made it across. A faster way to do this, however, is once you have made it up to here, if you're on the good global cycle, you want to spin across here and make it over to this side. If you've come up from the bottom, you can just jump across here, do a pole vault, and jump across. And then do a pole vault up to this, a pole vault up to this little ledge that exists for no reason. And this is where it gets really difficult. You want to stand near the edge, do sort of like a, a quick turnaround so you can get full momentum and pole vault up to this. It is a very difficult pole vault. And the biggest trick about it is that there's two main pole vaults. There's the high pole vault, looks like that. And there's the forward pole vault where you let go of it a little bit later. It still gets you extra height compared to a normal jump, but it makes you move a little bit forward. You need that forward momentum to make this jump. Otherwise, you do not get up this. The next section is the sand slide. The sand slide is very boring. You cannot jump, you cannot move. You can grab onto poles. They'll allow you to slurp into them and avoid rocks if you want to, uh, but it will slow you down significantly. It's better to take the damage from the rocks. And then you just jump through again and there's another sand slide. These are really annoying in 100% because there's crowns that you can miss. But these sand slides are just some, some time that you will never gain or lose anything. It is technically possible to do frame perfect jumps on it. It kind of like that as you're coming down. Uh, we're actually not sure if it is faster to do frame perfect jumps all the way down, but you'd have to do like 30 frame perfect inputs in a row or something ridiculous, so it's definitely not human to buy. Anyways, moving along, you want to come up to the corner of this and do sort of like an arch here. Not that big of an arch because you won't reach the pole. But do a little bit of an arch, grab this pole, and then when it hits that, It'll actually make your tongue slightly longer than if you had done a straight grab. Let me show you the straight grab. If you do a straight grab here, you don't have nearly enough distance to make it up to this. 
So anyways, once you come over to here, there's a cycle. If you're on the perfect global cycle, that will be down immediately. So you don't have to worry about uh, waiting for it. And that's the end of the cycles for this. Once you're up here, there's going to be a spike section. And these ones you do have to knock out. And you can hit these first two at the same time, by the way. Reach all the way over to grab that one. And then you can either go through here like normal, knocking that spike out, and then coming up to this. Or, or when you get to the second one, you want to grab the pole across the way, slurp into about the edge of this, and then spin around this pole. If you go a little too late, you might end up hitting this vulture here. But if you do it early enough, you'll still end up on this platform. Anyways, after you get up to here, go up to the next platform. This one you can do a neutral vault to. And then stay at the wall and go to this black line. You want to grab this pole that's across the way here. And it's almost directly left from this. And then you'll spin across and make sure that you grab onto this pole before you let go of the spin. Here's what happens if you don't. Zoom right off. So, just like the sand slides, these will not let you move, and the only way to get through them is to grab onto poles. Once you get to around here, kind of come in on this pole and then slip out to this other one. You can skip that middle pole grab. It's just very difficult. And that'll get you across. So coming up here, I was messing around while doing some re-records, and I literally just found a faster strat for this. You can do a curved tongue here, and it'll get you over to this section faster. You have to be careful that you don't do a straight tongue, because if you do, you'll hit the crown and fall into the oblivion. But previously, the faster strat was to come in and then go over here and spin around. So both of them are pretty similar in terms of time, but I thought I'd point out that new one that I, I just found while I was messing around. That'll lead you up to another set of these spikes. Again, you can do the pole vault method or the tongue method if you get to the side and back at the same time. Or again, you can jump between these. And you need to be centered and jump at the very last possible moment. If you miss it, and you take the damage, you can just run through with that anyways. Coming up here, you're going to want to jump onto this stair, and then make sure you touch this wall, and you're going to run off, and it's going to death warp you forward in the next area, and it's the only death warp in the game. But after that, jump from carpet to carpet. It's worth noting that every carpet here is directly horizontal from one another. There is no vertical movement going on at all. As long as you're going fast here, there's nothing too bad that can happen. And finally, you'll end up in the last section. This section has less optimization than the rest so you can slope boost off of the, some of these walls especially this here that can get you some slope boost after that we're not exactly sure if it's faster to go through the middle here and jump around this guy to not take damage or it might be faster to go along the back wall and use some slope boosts here. And optimally, we're not sure which one's better. You might want to grab these hearts if you're low on life, but generally you shouldn't be taking damage in this boss anyways. So anyways, here's the boss. So this boss is an armadillo. 
What he's going to do is bounce around like that he's showing in the animation. And we'll go over how that works out. So he's going to come up out of the ground, bounce and drop some crabs, and then bounce around some more. One of them he takes a little extra time. And then eventually he'll land and you hit him. But there are some speed strats here. So instead of waiting for the entire time for him to go through his whole cycle for him to land, you're actually able to hit him as he's falling. And that'll save you some time. And additionally, as he's rising. So if you combine those two pieces, you can do the fight something like this. As you start, don't hit anything. You need to stand in the exact same place where you start, and he will be unable to hit you on the first bounce. Before he lands, stick out your tongue and you'll grab five. Then you can hit him. On the next four, you hit him as he's rising. Don't worry about taking damage, it's not a big deal. And there you go. That's how you do the armadillo boss as fast as possible. And that strat's actually pretty easy. It's just a little bit of uh, timing. The timing doesn't change between any of the hits. So that's the entirety of Desert Castle. It is my favorite level in the game and a very fun level to play. A good beginner split time here is probably around the six, six and a half minute mark. And a, a good top level time here is under five minutes. In the description below, you'll see a link to the tutorial playlist, as well as a link to the Discord server and the speedrun.com page. Be sure to join the Discord server, we're always happy to help new players. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up, a comment, and subscribe so that this video is easier for other people to find. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.